born in 1945, modified in 1952. Marine MC1 with Colmorgan 4 power scope sniper rifle is here from Korean War to the Vietnam War, beginnings of the Vietnam War. Let's see how this puppy can do at our shooting uh, platform. We are starting from 305 uh, yards, so let me put the value. My dope says put six and aim just below the center because it hits high. So we'll see how this is going to end. We got some breeze coming down the field. Should be interesting. Ula, are we ready? Yes, we are. All right. Dwarf target at 305 yards. I'll hold on the left side, compensate for the wind a little bit. And beautiful hit right in the chest. Ula, we're not going to screw around. Uh, what do you think we should go probably, we should probably go to the 300 70 uh, seven yards that's that last small target small target dwarf target midget target uh between you have a gongs on the right side and then you got the full size ipsic at 350 okay okay so we're talking about that dwarf target which is between those two okay uh, are we on the same page 375 375 okay let's go i added more clicks to the scope closing bolt and again i'm going to hold slightly on the left side for that any notes three seven mm -hmm. spot on we should be spot on okay we'll see it's a very small target in that scope but we can manage I think I got him on the right arm. It was hit for sure. Nice pick. Boom. Yep. I, I got to watch out for that wind uh, because that wind opens up all down that field. But hit is a hit. And that's a very good hit. Very small target. Guys, these are small targets uh, like that. So uh, it's, it's, I'm really impressed with that rifle and uh, the, that we can knock out those targets. But enough with the bullshit talk at 400 yards, 400 yards. We're going to bump up. One more click to the turret. And as soon as Zula is ready, I'm going to prepare the round to into the chamber. I'm holding it, holding it. So far, uh, yeah, I see wind is picking up, guys. Okay, let's go. I see the wind is picking up and this is this is, and you see how we drifted. The problem is the wind comes and goes. So it's not steady wind, but I'm going to increase that hold now. Push more left. Boom, right in the neck. Beautiful performance from M1C with Garant with the Colmorgan scope. Uh, so far, so good. We knock out the 400. Ola, I think we have to go to the 450, but we'll, let's try that prone target. You oh, know what okay. I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. That sneaky little prone target. And uh, that's going to be an interesting shot. I hope I can pull this off. The wind holdover was perfect. Oh, that was a good call to push it more to the left. Okay, let's try it. All right, so this is what I'm trying to do here as well. And we'll see what's going to happen, right? All right, so this is this is very tricky target. Yellow. And very narrow. Not much real estate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> nailed him. All right, let me see. That was a tough shot, guys. Again, we are in the neck area. 
So uh, I'm eliminating all the habits <laughs> that works. They got a choking problem. <laughs> all right, too much fun. I'm having too much fun. Uh, Ula will go to 500, but uh, this time let's switch to the big target, 508. Okay. All right. And I got to put some clicks on the scope. And uh, the reason why I'm switching to the bigger target is because it's uh, the the steady lines in the Adriatico are rather thick. So it's starting to cover more and more real estate for me on that target. It will be rather hard to take that shot. I'm not saying it's impossible, but uh, I don't wanna, uh, yeah, that's like completely almost covered. The, okay. the, that little target was, it's disappearing. Great scope. They could get away a little bit uh, with, uh, not get away, but it would be better if that, that reticle was with thinner lines, but it is what it is. Okay, I am going to hold again on that favor that left side strongly because of what's happening. Well, are we good? Yep, let's go. And we are dead in the plate. I can see that hit, a uh, beautiful hit, beautiful performance. And as I said, it is, it, it's not that it's difficult to make that shot, uh, but for that smaller target, when the target shrinks, those uh, reticle lines completely are covering. It. So at this point for the small, for the small, these are like really tiny uh, dwarf size targets. Anyhow, enough with the bullshit talk, uh, we <laughs> switching. We're switching for the uh, 555 yards or Okay. All right. And I'm going to prep. So how's the wind? Wind is still, we still have to favor that left. Uh, and uh, so far, so, so good. We're handling that wind. I'm tackling it. Uh, wind is always the, the X factor, right? Uh, it's an equalizer. But uh, hey. We are, we are putting up the good fight and it's going nicely. My dope says 15.5. I cannot make 0.5 MOA on that scope. I think I'm going to dial 16 and hold in the middle. We'll see what's going to happen. And uh, if I screw up, I screw up. <laughs> How are we doing? It's ready. It's ready. All right. Let me close the bolt. Good grip on the rifle. Watch out for the wind. Pushing to the left. Beautiful. Almost in the center of the plate. So as you can see, if you will execute, you cannot complain. This old grunt is just keep keeps hammering or uh, whatever uh, target you're throwing at it. Ula, I'm not going to celebrate. Uh, let's go for the 610 yards exactly. And the dope on it should be 18. 18 on my turret. And we are going to uh, attempt to whack that uh, 600. It's exactly 610 yards. Uh, I always round up, you know, I say 600, but it's 610 yards target. So we'll see how this is going to end up. By the way, that was a good call to bump up uh, to the full value click. Uh, round up, up. And uh, I, I thought we end up very nicely on that 555 yards uh, play. So how are we doing, Kula? I'm ready. All right, she's ready. And let's see again. Watch out for the wind because we drifted to the right side. So increase the wind all over. Steady. That's a hit, I think on the left arm. And I think I may be overcompensated. That's a great hit. I'll take that, uh, guys. Playing with the wind, the wind conditions are changing. Still awesome, awesome hit. Ola, we're going to march, march to the 652 uh, yards, okay? Okay. 
for the 652 yards my dope card says 20 point almost 20.5 i'm going to dial 21 screw it we are high rolling <laughs> and and that wind probably that wind holdover was too much i was outside the plate uh, on the left side and and but to be honest with you the wind is also kind of dying out guys so uh but i'm still going to push left it, we got it's better to have that room to drift right on that plate and we'll see what's going to happen right so as soon as it's all ready well, the camera will work with me that's okay take your time uh, we they want to have a nice picture and that i guys i'm feeling right now we are blocked here on the left side so you may not see the movement on my magical string at the barrel but i feel how the wind is coming from the left side and uh, you see even the the netting the camo netting is moving now we, we are getting a, a, a basically a gust and i hate that i hate when this happening uh because it's i rather have a nice nice <laughs> wind blowing than coming and going coming and going uh, okay. all right she's ready because this throws basically a monkey wrench to the wind holdovers but uh you know what i'm not going to dwell on it we'll we have to make the shot right just like the guys had to do it so i'm going to push to the left Strong. <laughs> it took a moment, I wasn't sure. And boom, that sound traveled back to us. And what a beautiful, what a beautiful hit and the holdover. Uh, windage wise, we are almost dead in the center and elevation wise that was a good call to bump it up to 21 uh, as well wow all right Ula, 700 yards 700 okay. yards uh, let's see what the dope says uh, the 22.9 so we're going to dial 23 and uh that's going to be a challenging shot but uh we all try to conquer it just like we did at the 650 uh, five, right? We conquer 655, and we should have a good time at 700 yards line. We'll see. Okay. Okay, Ula is ready. Are you sure? Yes, I am. All right. All right. That wind is kind of slowing down. I'm still going to push outside the plate. Taking no chance. Oh, I think uh, there is, I see the splash I'm on the left like side, yes. So I probably overcompensated for the wind. Uh, but I, what I told you guys, this wind comes and goes. Still, outstanding performance. I couldn't ask for more. I mean, this rifle speak, speaks for itself. That being said, Ola, I think, can we make two more shots at that 700? Of course we can. Yeah, you didn't touch the camera yet, right? I did. Huh? Oh, you did? I did. Just give me a sec. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to, we'll try to, uh, I don't know if we'll correct for the wind because the wind is picking up again, guys. This is awesome. But this is what I like about shooting. It's like pretty much, you know, guys, we're more or less on the elevation dope. We all, we all can, you know, work it out, right? Uh, we, we are smart dudes. Yeah, but okay, uh, be beating the wind this is always a fun and uh, that's what makes the shooting so awesome all right you know what i'm going I'm not going to hold that much now on the left side we'll see if the gods of wind are going to punish me or not for it That's a hit on the plate. Again, took a moment and we got two rounds close to each other. You know what? Let's close it with the third shot. And we'll see how's that going to end up. And you see, I made that correction a little bit.
and it's a hit. And boom, we have a nice group now to discuss this all going back to the studio. So rifle did very, very well on our battle course, but let's see if we can conquer no your limits at plus 360 yards. Let's roll the footage. Nice shot. Right. One, one down. I put push that round a little bit higher after the first hit. We're smashing those plates so far. Beautiful. Three down. Two left to go, which the last plate is absolutely insane. I don't know if we'll knock it out. At three, out. <laughs> Four out of five out. This is getting ridiculous. Let me see if we can knock out that uh, absolutely, absolutely ridiculously small plate. Uh, but uh, if I miss, I'm not going to be pissed because this is, uh, I got completely covered picture for it in my scope. So I'm just guessing where the plate is. Oh, holy cow! Let me see it. Oh my gosh, guys, unbelievable. I honestly, guys, jaw dropping. As I said, that last target was absolutely almost impossible to see because of the thickness of the reticle in the scope and uh, i don't know have you seen it on the footage but i skimmed that top top of that little plate and hit the orange thing behind it it will be still a hit it was a good hit but like on the plate was just the skim on the top uh, so i uh, did the wind correction and i aimed a little bit higher without realizing it because that reticle is uh, thick in that Cole Morgan scope but that was done on purpose so you can fish out those targets easily uh, in the field for the combat type of the shooting this was a good solution at that time now we have a much better technology to do the reticles differently and you can see that very often uh, even I think we started doing this in like uh, early 70s past 80s when you have the bottom portion of the reticle really thick so it's easy to navigate and then inside the reticle you got a very fine print uh, on the reticle etching done that way and uh, you can you know put it the fine cross her on the target or the dot whatever the the scope maker uh, was doing but at that time you have to understand we're talking about the early 50s uh, that technology was not there and most of the reticles were just pieces of wire locked uh, inside the tube uh, the etching wasn't that popular yet and wasn't was it was just developing let's put it that way right uh, for the widespread uh, but going back to the scope to this uh, setup so in the early 50s the marine corps quickly realized that they want to have a different solution than what was on the m1c that uh like a drinking straw 
<laughs> scope was really not that great. I think we uh, agreed that the magnification was like 2.2 or two different sources say different things, but it is around two magnification is not really doing a justice of two dose of rifles. They can do much, much better when they are paired up with the better scopes. So in the early 50s, the Marine Corps knew that they have to do something, that this, this scope is just not good enough on the M1Cs. And even on the M1Ds, which were becoming uh, more, more of a standard, this was still very low magnification on, on those scopes. And again, that rifle, was, that rifle was capable of doing more with paired up with the different uh, optic. So after the, the research, the Cole Morgan was chosen as the, the scope for the Marine Corps. And this was the four power scope with the nice large turrets. And the turrets are basically adjusting around one MOA at the 100 yards. Uh, probably the designation was a one inch at the 100 yards. And uh, today, this is almost perfect. This is almost still working as it was designed. If you will look at the scope, it is hard to not recognize that this is almost a hallmarks. It that scope has hallmarks of later what we know as uh, the Redfield and the Redfield three to nine X uh, scope, which was later during during the Vietnam War uh, era used by the U.S. Uh, military. But at that time, uh, the Cole Morgan was still the independent company and they produced that uh, 4x uh, scope so the marine corps decided to put it and they uh, stayed with the uh, m1c mount style mount so you see get that, that rail uh, and uh, was still separate rail not like the m1d which is attaching with like a thumbnail screw uh, onto the receiver so it was still the m1c design just the upper portion was updated and those rings for the scope was they were enlarged because of course this is a bigger diameter of the tube than what you are seeing here still you got the two level levels and there were two styles of the locking levels like the very early locking levels with the rounded tips and then you had more like a uh, the counted like trap trapezoidal uh, levels and uh, both are very hard to find these days both are almost impossible. Uh, the scopes, they are still there. The mounts, not so much. Uh, there's tons of uh, reproductions. I don't want to say fake, or, but the reproductions. And uh, But this is, I was lucky enough to get the original mount and uh, the original scope. And uh, the only difference, the only not difference, but the only problem I had with that mount, what you see, I got the rubber bands, because from the recoil, those levers have a tendency to walk down. But this is what, what's happening on my classic M1C as well. So you just gotta watch out for those levers. And that's probably was one of the shortcomings of that mount. And uh, maybe that, that, that was some deciding factor that the M1D solution was uh, more secure. But even on M1Ds, you have to watch out for that thumbnail screw until uh, that screw likes to walk out. But going back to the MC1 <laughs> 1952. So this was basically what was happening. The need for the better scope uh, for the rifle and uh, for the sniper rifle and the Marines uh, recognizing that this is a really good solution. Between you and me, from the sniper perspective, I will tell you this is an outstanding system. Like this whole combined, uh, I'm assuming when these were new and not work out as much, those levers were staying uh, put. But even with that ghetto-like solution, uh, this is holding up very well and the rifle shoots the lights out. This specific rifle had a very, very interesting life, guys. And briefly, the rifle was born January, February 1945 as M1C uh, sniper rifle. Then it went through the refurbishment uh, in the 1952, 
probably probably have seen some action in Korea uh, as the plugged receiver. We assuming it was plugged receiver. Then the rifle was shipped to Greece as a part of the U.S. help uh, for the for the NATO countries, right? And it was in the Greek service for a long time. Then the rifle comes back to United States uh, through the CMP in 2007, I think 2006-2007. And they're opening the box boxes, they're going through the whole inventory, uh, uh, removing all the <laughs> grease, wax, whatever, right? From the boxes and uh, they realizing that the rifle is marked on a receiver SA-52, that means we went through the refurbishment uh, at the Springfield Armory, that's what we're assuming always, right? But the rifle had the M1C side rail on it. And this was extremely, it was like two rifles uh, like that, I think in the whole uh, 1,700 plus rifles which came in from the Greece. And of course, uh, the question was, well, how is that possible, right? So one of the theories is that the Greeks basically uh, re unplugged the holes in the receiver and they uh, brought it back to the M1C standard uh, for their usage. So that's the, that's the theory. We don't know. Uh, to this day, to, to my best information, and I'm, if, if something changed, please let me know in the comments, uh, the CMP was not able to ever secure the scopes from uh, the Greece. Uh, the, the, I think that never pan out. There was an idea that at some point they may be able to, to secure that order, but I, I don't remember seeing those scopes uh, coming through the CMP. So if anyone has any information uh, and would like to add to it, please post in the comments about the M1C or uh, MC1, <laughs> if possible, uh, scopes coming out of Greece. Uh, so that would be that would be very, very uh, cool. So there's still a lot of uh, questions about the whole MC1 program. That's I'm calling this MC1 because this is uh, like 1952 when those scopes were purchased uh, by Marine Corps and the Cole Morgan equipped. Uh, and that lasted up to the end of 50s, early 60s, where the Marines basically deemed those rifles an absolute solution, right? And uh, they started unloading them from the inventory. There are some people who are saying that some of these rifles uh, may end up in Vietnam, maybe not in the official role as the... Of uh, the Marine Corps sniper, but uh, in the hands of the uh, South Vietnamese Army. Uh, again, there is uh, is more rumors and the speculations than the actual facts, and uh, I cannot I cannot find anything yet uh, on that. Going back to the rifle, I'll definitely, from my perspective, this was well suited rifle for the duty, sniper duties in Vietnam, no question about that. We know the M1Ds and some uh, M1Cs still end up in Vietnam. Uh, so could MC1 be involved in Vietnam? Sure, you know, well, why not? I mean, the crazy shit, what you were seeing from the early days uh, on the sniping and in Vietnam and the people running with uh, the strange hardware, which defined the logic was happening there. Uh, but as far as the documents or official nomenclature, non, 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 non I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, uh, there is. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe my friend Steve Norman uh, will dig out more information and post uh, something. He's doing a great job with scorching the archives and looking to the archives. Uh, Andrew too, uh, and we'll see what's going to happen. But as of, as of right now, there's more questions than answers. Uh, for the whole period, I would say, right after the, the World War II and the Korean War and the Vietnam War, uh, we need to do a better job to preserve the history. And I think uh, that's absolutely doable. But anyhow, going back to the rifle, 
this was the, the, the like in a nutshell, the, the story of this specific uh, rifle, which you're seeing on the rack here. Uh, the, I was honestly shocked and surprised to see how accurate this thing is and how well it shoots. And I absolutely love this setup. I think with that Colmorgan for power scope, this rifle would have no problem to go through the Vietnam War. And uh, I cannot really compute why this uh, wasn't happening and why the Marines decided to kind of scrap out uh, that program at the beginning of the 60s. So uh, the military does the strange things. Uh, that's the one thing what we know. It is what it is, uh, but uh, we'll come back to that because we'll keep keep pushing uh, on the series for the Vietnam uh, War sniping. Uh, there's much more to be said, and I want to go back to the Korean War and uh, put up the rifles which were participating there too and talk about those rifles. All right, that's it. As I said, if anyone has any more information, pictures they would like to share and things like this, please, please let me know. Uh, guys, it's up to you. Let's build that community. Uh, let's drill down to as much as we can, and uh, I'll be I'll be more than happy to share those informations and see where where this journey can take us. Uh, but if you have a chance to snatch that scope and the mount and the setup, uh, absolutely go for it and uh, recreate those uh, MC ones <laughs> from 1952. And uh, you will you will be uh, for a right. Uh, one more thing, I do have a flash hiders on those rifles, those conic flash hiders, and this is something what I want to address in another video. Uh, they create the they create the shape, the point of impact usually on on the rifle, but also if that uh, muzzle device is not not staying put. Uh, it can open up the groups severely. So they they look cool. They work actually very well, very decently uh, at uh, eliminating the flash. But but there are some drawbacks. So but that's something for the next video. Anyhow, as always, I hope you enjoyed the shooting. I hope you enjoyed the footage uh, from it, right? And if you have any questions, let me know underneath of the video. Any comments, let me know underneath of the video. Tell me if you like that video like this or not. And what would, what would you like to see? What would you like to change? Let's beat the Google uh, and YouTube algorithm. The, the posts and comments help. Like the video. Big thanks to our Patreons. As always, big thanks to Patreons. You guys are the best. You helping to ease the pain with... Uh, creating all of this. So, hey, big thanks uh, to all of you. By the way, if someone is looking for the Vintage Rifle Shooters Club uh, Tri-Blend uh, Luxury T-shirts, they are in the store. They are in the store. Link in the comments and the video description as well. All right, I'm shutting up. Until the next video. Thanks for the watching, guys. Bye.